What's up guys, Valence Ring here with Nondecor Duco and State 16 bringing you another video and this one I want to talk about Arena, the Hero Duel Survival, Hero Duel Glory, and Com Commander Duel Conquest. I uh, keep getting a lot of questions about these especially because if you look in here these troop chips on the edge the only way to get these and the only way to level them up as far as uh, I know as of this video is in arena duel the arena hero duel glory this is a very difficult event to get into the reason being is because in hero duel survival you have to be ranked in the top 500 you can see right here i'm currently ranked 423 the problem with that is it's a week-long event and the way it's calculated isn't necessarily even partially how well you do against other players but it's based upon how many of these tokens that you get in relation to other people you can see here Boba Fett has 2147 tokens so when you battle and you win then you get a certain amount of tokens based upon the difficulty of your opponent and that's ranked by where they're located and their points so if I go up against this top level person and when I'm going to get more coins, more medals than the bottom level person. So you're, you can always refresh this. It's free to refresh. It doesn't cost anything. I can refresh all day until I find someone like this guy that I want to beat. So the key factor here is your heroes. Now, you don't necessarily want to focus on what's my strongest heroes that work sometimes. And, but other times, it's less important of how strong they are and more important how well they work together. I would call that synergy. If you understand the synergy of your heroes, then you're going to be able to do much better in Hero Duel Survival. So being able to get up to that top uh, 500 places is what's going to allow you to participate in the hero duel glory as you can see in the shop this is where you can get those troop chips the three star troop chips and then you have to upgrade them so you have the troop troop chip promoter to get up to level four and five and the the chip promoter and this is for all chips and then the troop chip enhanced material, this is how you level them up, your chip promoter too, and your troop chip promoter too. I would only recommend using Hero Glory Shop for the troop chips. The reason being is there's no other way to get it. You are not guaranteed to get in. And sometimes you can be doing very well all week and then just have a bad run on the last day. So definitely use your troop chips in here. Uh, you can get anti-serum and some EVA stuff too, which, you know, if you have a few extra and you want to get that stuff great more power to you i use it strictly for my troop chips upgrading them uh, promoting them enhancing them getting them higher uh, the other event that also runs in arena and this usually runs with global ace commander it's every other week event is commander dual conquest and this is a great event for resources i utilize this predominantly for getting those hard to get resources and i use it predominantly for food because of the discount which i've mentioned in multiple videos so i definitely recommend that of course you can get the advanced recruit coins which are hard to get and this is the only shop that i know of that you can buy them but they are expensive at 2500 uh, medals a uh, commander win medals not cheap to get so let's go in and I, I'll go down Commander Duel Conquest really quick since I'm here. Um, this, you definitely want to make sure you have your military boosts on, especially if you're VIP level 10. See, I'm set for economy right now. Well, if I go into Commander Duel Conquest with economy set, what's actually going to happen is, is my troop lineup is going to be based off of that. So... I don't know if you can see down here, it says I can only actually put in 174,500, even though with military boosts I can put in 189,000. That's 15,000 troop difference. That's a big deal, including the fact that my stats are going to be reflective of my economy boosts and not my military boosts for my VIP level for your talent sets for your commander so you definitely want to make sure before you start your commander dual conquest to come in set your troop boosts for your military 
set your uh, talent set to military this way you get all of these boosts will apply for that battle so then of course you come in Commander Dual Conquest is important as far as heroes go, but this is predominantly going to be your battle might, how well and effective you are in battle. You can click their picture to see what they have and it gives you a complete breakdown. It shows you what heroes are in their lineup, what um, types of troops and the tier of troops that they have. The red arrows on the right means that you are underpowered compared to the opponent. So you can see here, uh, this player, KW, KDWSA, is pretty much overpowered in almost every area, uh, except for fighter damage up, which is a tech skill from your alliance, shooter damage up, is uh, rider damage up, and then troop damage up and troop damage taken down is your glory level refinement. And you definitely want those as high as possible, not easy to get up very high. But obviously they have a higher tier troop, they probably they almost have they have a fewer troops than me but they have enough where it's close enough i'm definitely going to lose this battle i don't want to challenge someone that i know i'm going to lose so i can come in here and check and see that this person reaper has tier 9 troops their fighter stance just like i am i can see their heroes are based on fighters except for they made a mistake and have obsidian in obsidian boosts riders i know that from experience a frame boost shooters they could have a stronger lineup by incorporating even some of their uh, four star heroes that boost fighters, but they didn't do that for whatever reason, and that's okay because it helps me. Um, as you can see, other than some of these alliance boosts and the troop damage up and down, they're pretty much overpowering me. One thing I like to look at is these troop uh, stats. If the troop attack, troop defense, and troop hit point, if I'm 100% higher in these, then these, these single um, points uh, stats don't seem to make as much of a difference, especially if I have more uh, troops than they do. We have almost an equal number of troops. We're both fighter based. I'm probably not going to win this battle, even though some of my stats are higher. Um, it's something I could try if I wanted to. Otherwise, I'm going to come down see 150,000 troops. I have 40,000 more troops and they're shooter based. You can see all their stats favor their shooters. But look at these troop attacks. I'm almost 150% over their a, a troop attack, their defense, and their hit points, which means that you can take all of my stats for my fighters and boost it another 100% over the opponent. This is great. I have to absolutely love seeing that. It's going to make these shooter stats basically disappear. So I'm definitely going to attack and I'm probably going to win this hands down. Um, obviously, just select your troops and I have mine set for fighters. You can see I have Ulrich in and Zephyr. Even though Zephyr is not one of my strongest heroes, he boosts fighters specifically. And then of course you can check your applicable stats and this is what you're actually going into battle with and then go ahead and hit challenge. You can watch the battle if you'd like and it is informative. I recommend doing it every now and again, but because I know I'm pretty much gonna win this, I don't need any other information. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this little button down here to skip the battle. And as you can see, I won and I've ranked up 230 places for that win. You can see here where it matters the points, um, I got 21 points and they lost 21 points. So that's basically how the battles go. You definitely want to click on the picture, see what you're up against, see how the stats play out, and check again. Look at these troop attack defense and troop hit points. So even though they're boosted a little bit higher than me, there's a good chance with the fewer uh, soldiers that I would win this battle. And it's almost so close that I would almost be willing to switch to my riders because they're only fighter based. So fighters are weak against riders, shooters are weak against fighters, and riders are weak against shooters. That is important, especially in Commander Duel Conquest. You definitely want to remember that. Fighter, rider, shooter, vehicle. The weakness, that's the order of death. The weakness is shooters are weak against fighters, riders are weak against shooters, fighters are weak against riders, and that's the circle of weakness. Definitely want to remember that. Um, I'm half tempted to just try this because I think I'm going to blow them away because of the troop attack, defense, and hit points being so much higher than their boosts. And we'll actually, yeah, let's go ahead and do this and see what happens. This should be no problem. I should win this hands down. 
as you can see. Those troop uh, boosts are huge and a lot of people ignore them, focusing solely on you know, fighter, 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 or shooter, shooter, shooter. That's great, and you definitely want to focus in the beginning. Try to get one up as strong as possible, but make sure you're utilizing your troop boost whenever possible because it boosts any type of troop that you put in. So let's jump right into Hero Duel Survival, and this will tie into Hero Duel Glory. Obviously, I'm not ranked in it, so I can't participate and show you this. I'll probably do another video next time I'm able to showing you Hero Duel Glory. But let's talk about how to get into Hero Duel Glory. The most important thing is to remember is that this is a week long event you need to do your free challenges every day but you also don't want to lose losing will lose you these coins up here and that's what determines your rank based upon your comparison compared to other players so you have to be ranked top 500 and you can see the number of tokens from here to me isn't that great but that's over 400 places difference so you Again, this is strictly heroes. This has nothing to do with your troops or troop boosts. This is all about understanding your heroes and matching them up against your opponents. So this is uh, you know Johnny and Gauz, I'm guessing. And basically what I'm looking at is they have the order of which the heroes are in the lineup for the defense is critical and i don't know if a lot of people understand how this works but the person in the middle the hero in the middle is predominantly going to take most of the damage in the beginning their rage is going to fill the fastest and they're going to proc or use their skill more often so a lot of times you will see setups or lineups where either Zephyr, like a, a big tank, or these healers are in the center lineup because people believe that that will allow them to heal their heroes constantly. And they're absolutely not wrong. So I'm actually going to challenge this guy. As you can see, this is similar to my defense lineup, but a little bit different. Um, I do run a different attack versus defense. Now, attacking is important. Like here, up here, you can see in their defense formation, they have Requiem and Phoenix. Both are red. If you're attacking and you don't have, like they don't have any gold heroes, if you don't have that gold hero, then all your gold tiles will do one damage and that's it. So I always recommend, if possible, if you have the heroes to back it up and, the, and they work well together, make sure that you have the full rainbow of colors. Every color in your lineup is going to do well. The only other benefit to running two colors in a lineup is that every time one of those tiles hits the damage is multiplied because you're using those tiles for two heroes or three or four or even five instead of just one so there is a benefit to that but you can definitely get caught in some trouble when you only have one tile that's effective so let's go ahead and jump into this battle i do want to show a couple of tips and tricks as far as that goes i have my battle speed set to three um, and you can do something interesting if you are doing auto battle you can select a hero target and this will actually allow your heroes to kind of target that particular hero so if you have a particularly difficult hero that with uh, your own heroes that only attack one hero not across the board selecting them as a target can help it doesn't guarantee it but it can help you uh, defeat that hero and give you a boat bonus for that other than that this little guide up here know your foe's weakness this is vastly important especially in arena hero dual survival knowing which tiles and which colors are weak and strong against each other will drastically improve your odds so for instance eve here in the middle she's the healer she's going to end up taking a lot of the damage she's weak against gold uh, or i think it's called wary style heroes so any tile that's gold like this one or these and when they hit her, they're going to do 200% damage, while everything that's purple is only going to do, is actually going to do 50% damage. So we don't want to hit her with anything but gold, if at all possible. Hartwell is another healer. She's green, as you can see from the top. Red points to green, which means that she is weak against red tiles. Red is weak against blue. 
so you want to hit phoenix with blue tiles now understanding what all these heroes do is important okay and you can actually hold on their picture and it will show you okay so hartwell does fast heal her rage speed is average and that can be important restores 36 36 percent of all allies hit points dispels all foes buffs and dispels all allies debuffs that's actually pretty good even though she's a four star hero her skills work well so they're running two heroes or two healing heroes and phoenix now phoenix is a great hero because every round of battle that she survives her attack goes up five percent and you actually can't see that here but i know that because i know her very well so you can look at the heroes see what they do but i always want to target phoenix if at all possible to eliminate her as quickly as possible i know she's weak against blue so i'm going to go ahead and hit her with the blues now obviously you're not always going to have everything lined up where you want there is some certain random factors and other factors involved that i don't even know all the details and suffice it to say that you want this battle you want to target if possible one hero at a time get them off the board as quickly as possible and then focus on the rest make sure that your healers if you run healers are getting enough tiles sent up to fill their rage so that you can utilize those heals as soon as possible you want to make sure that you're able to heal your heroes especially if you know you're taking on some damage other than that, again, understanding how your heroes work together is drastically going to improve your odds. So definitely want to try your best to understand that. I always try to send the best attack for against whichever hero. Otherwise, I'm just going to play this out really quick and see what happens. I shouldn't have any problems winning because I'm just overpowered, uh, a, a little bit overpowered on their might. But I am targeting Phoenix. As you can see, she does a lot of damage and she puts on some crazy, uh, some crazy, <laughs> you, you basically you take more damage over time. So you definitely want to get rid of her as soon as possible and make sure you're able to heal up. With Fox, uh, she removes debuffs. I might actually lose this because it's not looking good. So f because Fox removes debuffs, uh, see Phoenix just tearing me up. Uh, she will remove that Phoenix debuff or that that Phoenix. Yep. See Fox is down This is not going as planned Okay, and so I lost. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't always matter. Uh, that number there, that might number, even though you're overpowered, sometimes you just get into trouble and the tiles don't go your way. As you can see, I run Phoenix and Requiem in my lineup with Obsidian, Eve, and Fox. Uh, I put Requiem in the front because she does a, a large amount of damage. She's also my strongest hero. And I change this up all the time depending upon how my record is going. You can check your record down here to see where you're winning and losing. Uh, you can see I usually win quite a bit. Um, I actually, that's it's been all wins up until I took on that guy and happened to lose. Now, it does happen. Sometimes it just doesn't go your way. There is a tiny bit of luck involved, but I'm going to go ahead and try one more and uh, see what happens here. That's another thing I did want to mention as far as these battles go. These uh, canisters that destroy, if you get uh, basically, I think five uh, in one shot. You can, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in one shot, excuse me. If you get seven in one shot of these, then you'll be able to clear all the tiles of that color. These are huge. The ones where you get four in a row, like this blue one, and you end up getting this little grenade. I'm not a fan of those grenades. You shouldn't try too hard to get them. Occasionally it makes sense to get them, but it's not something that I would go out of my way to get. The 
seven ones where you get the big canister those you definitely want they're very helpful they clear the entire board they create a large cascade uh, usually and as you can see that one bottle was able to wipe out mantis who is a great hero she's tough to beat sometimes so otherwise i'm just going to continue with the battle hopefully i'll win this time make sure your healers are getting what they need so that you can actually heal up uh that was a critical issue i had uh, last round ulrich he boosts defense and also um spreads out damage across everybody so i he can pee tough but the funny thing is is the fewer heroes you have the weaker his skill becomes until it actually can be become problematic so he's the kind of hero that realistically needs to be in the front um, if you're going to run him then run him at the very front of the lineup and this way you can um, have his skill go off as soon as possible so you get that defense boost and you're spreading the damage out now as far as my lineup goes this is one thing i did want to show you utilizing myers and fox together is an awesome combo myers uh, has a basically he decreases the opponent's attack and increases your all your attacks the problem is is he also reduces your hit rate um, I think it's by 40%. Well, that's huge. I mean, it's basically you're, you're missing almost half the time. But the attack boost is 80%. So you're hitting for 180%. And that's just his boost. So other people might boost you up even higher. Uh, especially running with like Phoenix where her attack gets really high late in the game. That can be huge. The problem is that when he activates his skill, you can also miss. But his skill increases your attack fox removes your debuffs including the debuff that he puts on you so now i'm hitting for 180 percent attack and I, other than their defense or block i'm not going to miss that's huge that's how they work well together that's why i run them together um, and of course fox also boosts your defense as well as uh, removing those debuffs as you can saw, see I was hitting Eve but but everyone was taking damage and I almost got Fox because of uh, Ulrich's skill um, so that's definitely one downside to him the fewer heroes you have on the board the more that they're gonna take damage um, across everybody the other thing I want to mention like you just saw is you want to try to create cascades if you can um, shoot you know one thing at a time so that uh, basically they'll fall into place as you can see here this five across is uh, what you need for that canister um, I recommend getting that even if it's not necessarily the optimal time to because you can always save it for later I'm trying to work on Fox here because having two healers up against is really difficult um, but of course I can use Myers to remove that buff of uh, defense and then once that's done I'll go ahead and, and use my canister um, unfortunately I didn't get the cascade I want but I was able to line up some greens for canister and then of course obsidian also steals buffs and does a massive amount of damage their Ulrich is pretty tough and it uh, doesn't look like he's allowing much hits through but that happens sometimes you just got to take the good with the bad it is a battle and like I said there is some luck involved otherwise they're just going to keep healing each other so that's why you really if at all possible you want to focus on one even if they're healing up try to maximize your damage to that particular hero uh, if you're able to and then knowing what what your heroes are capable of so i'm going to go ahead and try and get myers back because once their uh, defense is up then i'm doing less damage as you can see so i really really need myers to remove all these buffs that these guys have going on um, obsidian is great for that use obsidian before myers because he steals buffs he transfers them to your allies so then go ahead and steal uh, and remove those buffs with myers um, that's how you have to understand how your heroes work together uh, remove the buffs with fox the debuffs with fox uh, for that miss factor and then of course requiem hits so hard at, at with 180 percent boost to her uh, attack 80 uh, percent boost so go ahead and hit again she just hits so so hard and that's how a battle can look pretty crappy and then end up with a win so i won't do any more battles right now obviously my rank is still 435 i won one i lost one 
uh, not optimal. I, I really wanted to win both of those. Um, bad tactics. It does happen. A little bad luck. Anyways, that's Hero Duel Survival. Um, the big takeaway I want to remind you of is understanding the, di the difference between defense and attack, utilizing the best heroes for each. The order of the lineup does make a difference. Um, as you can see, I have Requiem in the middle, followed by a strong healer, followed by my second, or my second strongest as far as my tank goes. Um, I all have good skills. Phoenix is a good back row hero because um, even though her skill is strong, she gets stronger the longer she's in battle. And then, of course, Eve over here is my secondary healer. Um, so understanding how that works and choosing, uh, you can change your lineup based upon what you see, too. For instance, if you see, you know, Phoenix and, and Zephyr and you see all these, like, for instance, if I know that um, blue is w weak against green, I can put more green heroes in if I really wanted to focus on these guys. Um, they're going to get double damage boosted up things like that utilize understanding you really have to understand each hero how they work what their skill does what's going to happen when their skill goes off and how you can mitigate that how you can counter it how you can attack against it and how you can use the weakness and the strengths of the colors and how they match up to your benefit once you get down below that uh, current rank of 500 at the end of the week, at the end of the contest, then you'll be able to enter Hero Duel Glory. It's not easy to get into. Everybody wants in. You have to have some tough heroes. I mean, look at these lineups. All Red Star heroes. Some of them plus 7, plus 6, plus 6. All level 310. And that's just one of their lineups. I mean, the might for each of these lineups is, you know, almost 15 million. Just That's just hero might. I run my best lineups around 10 or 11 million for my hero might. Very difficult to get into, obviously. Uh, but if you do get in here, then you're able to get those troop chips and level them up. Definitely recommend doing that. Again, uh, to reiterate, Commander Duel Conquest is predominantly the strength of your heroes uh, plus your troops. And this is all going to be your military might. So this one is a little bit more forgiving because it's all about uh, your troop lineup. Make sure you have your talents set for that, and you can hopefully do well in that one as well and get those coins for the resource um, resources that you're probably lacking. At any rate, guys, this is Valence Ring again with Nondecor, Duco, and State 16. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, like and subscribe, please, and I'll see you in the next video.